So the two questions of this video is related to are kind of two aspects of a similar question. The first one is why specifically I'm no longer a data analyst and the other one is is data analytics no longer a good career and are there things like artificial intelligence that are maybe going to take away some of those jobs in the future. Let's begin with the first part of why I personally, me specifically, am no longer a data analyst or call myself a former data analyst. So a slight bit of background on my career. I started as a data specialist in early 2016 after I came back from Montreal and I've worked with data management, data analytics, um, data consulting and sort of the overall data space for about four and a half to five years now. In May last year, I switched roles to become a project manager, specifically in the systems project management space. And early this year in 2021, I moved to become a program manager for things related to process and product development. So a bit of a s shift in career focus, I'd say. So in terms of project management and program management, there is quite a significant difference between both where project management generally focuses more on the most efficient possible deliverable of some kind of a work product or um, end results, whereas program management focuses more on the overall coordination of projects and activities within an organization that aligns with a specific business goal. So usually project management, for example, is a lot easier to outsource than program management because program management essentially is a lot more tied to the organization's um, goals as such. So that's kind of a background on what I used to do and what I'm doing now. Why in particular did I make this change? From my perspective for me, um, learning and growth in my career has always been a super important thing and at this point about a year ago um, I had learned a lot about you know data analytics and the data field of work um, but I felt that you know the project management program management aspects of my personal skill development were something that I wanted to work on still. And so for me, it was mainly focused on, you know, balancing out my personal skill set and focusing on a different kind of a skill set for a while. So I had worked with systems um, and system related analytics before. Um, my most recent sort of analytics work before I transitioned into systems project management was mostly related to systems performance, um, systems related processes, and um, systems use. So from that point of view, it aligned very well with what I'd done in the past and what I was very good at um, from an analytical perspective. From an outsider's perspective, my move from project management to program management may have seemed quite fast. It happened within roughly six to seven months. But actually, in the background, I had been working on the project that I ended up moving to take over when I officially moved into project management for probably six to nine months before I actually officially transitioned into a project management team. So for me, I worked on the same project for, I'd say anywhere between like 14 to 16 months. And in terms of program management, it was again, um, a similar skill set, and I also wanted to see about this new organization that I joined because it was just incredibly exciting. There was never anything wrong with data analytics as a field. I still do a lot of analysis work in my current job to sort of support um, prioritization efforts, for example, and my projects. But it's there was there was a set of skills that I wanted to develop, such as stakeholder management and stakeholder communications, that I couldn't really get to do in the same extent when I was a data analyst as I can um, in project and program management roles. So it was mainly to bring more variety into my personal skill set and career. And I talked about this a little bit previously on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, do it. Cause I do talk a lot about a lot on there and I share a lot of experiences from just my day-to-day -day life but um, I shared a little bit about how I've always had this mixture of advice on whether I, su I should specialize or stay a generalist and a lot of people are really pushing that specialist narrative and I understand it for certain industries but I also look at things from my own experience perspective where actually it's not 
a specific specialization that gets me hired each time. Actually, it's a combination of a couple of different areas. So the experience with data, project management, product related work, and usually my business background in addition to that is the combination that keeps being interesting to employers. It's not that they hire me for a one specific skill set, it's the mixture of all of those. And that's why I kind of call myself an expert generalist and that hopefully, once I explain it a little bit, helps you understand why I would want to strengthen something in my skill set that isn't necessarily yet as strong as some other parts. So for me, I realized that um, obviously my business background is my business background. I have my education in um, business and a good solid set of experience in data. So I have that kind of as an underlying specialization on top of the business background. But then um, when it comes to things like project management um, and product development, I've worked with both, but not to the same extent as for example with data. Working in systems project management and then process and product development related program management that's kind of trying to balance out the the skill equation that I have so that I can sort of lift that side of my skills up to the same part with the business and data background. So it's kind of more so strengthened me as a, an expert generalist rather than trying to specialize in something else completely, which is something that I would maybe consider a complete career change. Um, but I don't consider this a career change. So I hope that explains it a little bit more than what um, is evident from my videos before. Could I still go back into analytics? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, do I see myself doing it in the next couple years? Probably not, but there's nothing wrong with analytics. It's not why I left and, and my leaving analytics for now by no means means that there's anything wrong with that particular field of work. And I mean, I never meant for data analytics to be my only career path. And it's, it's something that I do want to encourage people to think about as well. Like if you have multiple things that you're interested in, it doesn't mean that you only need to focus on one. You can build them all together to make for a more interesting combination than necessarily one specialization would be. What I also want to highlight is that if you do decide to become an analyst and further down the line, maybe you want to try something else, the skill set that you have as a data analyst is incredibly valuable for other professions as well. So as a project manager, for example, it's not always easy to get data analytics support. So sometimes it might be easier to do some of your lighter analytics yourself and just save time, even if it's technically not your job. You're also going to gain a wonderful way of thinking, at least in my perspective, of looking at things from a data-driven perspective. So basing your understanding of your work and prioritization and organizational goals on data rather than just subjective gut feelings or what you basically what you feel might be important. Um, you'll have this different way of basing your decisions on evidence. Even if you end up going into basically almost anything else, um, the data analyst skills are going to serve you well. So that's also something that I want to say. If you're somehow worried that if you pursue this, you can't do anything else. No, if you pursue data analytics and then you decide to do something else, your background is going to be hugely valuable. So no, my reasoning for leaving data analytics wasn't grounded into data analytics being a bad career path in any way, um, more so just my own willingness to grow a complementary skill set um, for my career growth. And so that's about that. But we have uh, the other question that c keeps being linked to this one is if data analytics is a good career path still and, and what the future of that might look like. So I think data analytics absolutely is still an excellent career path. Companies are struggling to just have enough data literate people, which is a much lower skill level in data than what data analytics as a career path actually requires. There's a huge need for data analysts in organizations. And so, yeah, there's there's no fear from my side on whether data analytics is a good career path for the next years. Some of you were concerned about AI and how that will impact the industry. I have quite a few thoughts about how I personally, me as a one woman, and my two cents on how the industry is likely going to develop in the next two to five years. So if you would like me to go deeper into that topic, do leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to make a separate video about that, but I don't think it can fit comfortably all of that information into this particular video, uh, even though I am very used to making 20 minute videos. But yeah, what I'd say is 
I think sort of the low level analytics, so the type of drag and drop analytical platforms and non scripting types of analytics is going to get more integrated into just a lot more roles than we've seen before. So if you are a marketing manager or something, um, you will likely be doing more of your own like very low level baseline analytics, um, not only reading dashboards, but maybe creating your own from like a drag and drop user interface or something like that. Um, so I think that's going to be more common. But when we think about analytics teams right now, I think that's only going to be good news because right now I feel like a lot of analytics teams are very stuck providing low level analytics support to teams that don't have enough skills or you know, data skills to do that themselves. So what I actually see this doing is focusing data teams and data analytics teams to actually execute on the things that they're specifically good at, um, not just providing individual queries to individuals in just various teams, but actually going harder to the two kind of main aspects of analytics that I think a lot of analytics teams have. So the breadth of analytics, so scaling insights across the organization and making making sure that the resources and the analytics capabilities that the teams need in order to do those low level analytics themselves are there and sort of become this almost like a, a an analytics business partner to the organization because if you think about it you have business teams and then you have something like data engineering and like in the middle there's this gap of like data engineering or the software engineering side not necessarily being very familiar with all of the business context and then the business people not really being very familiar with the you know, more technical side of things. So in that middle, I think data analytics teams will grow their impact as the teams that understand both. So in order to provide really good analytics, you need to have that context into the business. But in order to provide solutions that work, they also need to have visibility into sort of the data infrastructure and they need to understand that enough. So that's kind of, I think, one way that analytics is going to develop. The other one is focusing more on the more interesting complex analytics that actually drive massive impact and might unearth something that is a huge insight for the entire organization rather than focusing on individual teams requests for like daily reporting and stuff like that. So I think those two will become more prominent, which is great news for data analytics teams and things will start getting more integrated into other roles in terms of everyday analytics. So still a huge importance on data analytics teams, just a slightly different context and scope than before. But that's just my, you know, two cents on on what I think is going to happen. Um, if you'd want me to go more in depth into this, do let me know. And so I know some people have been kind of worried about this sort of longer term perspective of like, do you think data analytics is going to exist as a profession in, I don't know, five to ten years and, and my personal opinion is that yes, um, I think it will. Will it look a little bit different than it does today? Most likely, yes. But I don't, that's not necessarily a reason not to go for the particular field um, if you're interested in it and maybe on a more general career advice side of things. I do want to say that even if you think that a specific job won't exist as it is today in 10 years, I wouldn't in most cases use that as a reason to not pursue it. Because if you think about the next decade and you think that your skills and your know-how and your experience aren't going to develop to a place where you can do something different with it or move to a new role, you're definitely underestimating yourself big time because 10 years is a huge span of time these days, especially in the technology field. So if you think that you might be interested in this for like the next five years, like absolutely go for it. I haven't, I mean, I was in data analytics for about five years and now I'm doing something kind of adjacent, but still different and the skill set that I built during those years absolutely facilitated that change and so yeah um don't don't you know downplay or underestimate how much you are going to develop and, and learn within that time period it doesn't matter if data analytics looks the same in 10 years and so I hope this perspective was helpful and um since you were requesting this I hope this answered some of your questions about why I'm no longer personally a um, data analyst I'm kind of thinking about two follow-up videos on this because 
um, there are kind of two directions in which um, I could talk more about this and I, I would love it if you could leave a comment down below if any of this is interesting to you. So one would be um, a more in-depth look at my career and how I got from, you know, university to this particular point in time where I'm working as a program manager in a tech company and what decisions I made along the way and what I was teaching myself or learning um, by myself during this time because obviously I, I never stopped studying even though I wasn't in school anymore. And another video that I've been mentioning in this video um, would be one about how I think data analytics will look like maybe in the next two to five years and what kinds of developments I see happening in the industry. So if either one of those would be interesting, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button so that more people can find it. And if you'd like content like this in the future, hit the subscribe button and the bell to never miss an upload. With that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.